Have you ever wondered what it's like to fish for wild salmon in Alaska? When the rivers swell with millions of fish, what's it like to take part in the grand harvest? Living from the land is a deeply ingrained part of Alaskan life and has been for thousands of years. Traditions of the past live strong in the present, and we are about to get a glimpse into this enduring facet of life on the last frontier. We are invited to our friend's fish camp along the Kenai River, and we are beyond curious to see how it all works. What is the life cycle of salmon? How is salmon caught, processed, and stored? And is it true? Can you really stock the freezer for the entire year? Jump on in and experience it all with us. This story begins here along the Kenai River. Our friends Dave and Jane bought this piece of land a while back, and over time they've turned it into a place for friends and family to gather for the annual salmon run. It's called Fish Camp. The idea of an annual fish camp is not a new one. The tradition dates back centuries, and to this day holds profound historical and cultural significance within the subsistence practices of native Alaskan communities. The salmon come once a year, and when they do, they bring life. They form a vital part of the food supply, and so the practice of catching, processing, and drying hundreds of salmon in temporary summer camps is as old as the Alaskan summer days are long. Fish camp is also a deeply important time of connecting and strengthening bonds, a crucial cultural transmission point where traditional knowledge, skills, and values are passed down through generations. And so even today, the coming of the salmon is like a rallying cry across Alaska. Time to gather, work together, and stock freezers and pantries. We are ready to pitch in. That's the law and that's good common sense. Oh wow, look at that, Anthony. Look what you got. Oh my god. Wow. We got three together, we got six. Good. Alright, Anthony, you're gonna have to be careful with those big boots that are going down there. Wait a second. Say the word. Let's do it. Welcome to the Kenai River. Now, when it comes to fishing in Alaska, the Kenai is royalty. The river snakes 82 miles from Kenai Lake to its mouth at Cook Inlet. It is a mecca for anglers and is known worldwide for its world-class rainbow trout, dolly varden, and salmon fishing. The largest king salmon on record was caught here, weighing in at a whopping 97 pounds. Between July and August 2023 alone, about 2.3 million sockeye and 14,000 kings will fill this river on their way to spawn in their natal streams. And what does that even mean? Well, we will dive into the life cycle of salmon in a bit, but first, let's fish. The goal today is sockeye salmon, also called reds. That's who is dominating the river right now. It's late July and they are right on time. Yeah! Woohoo! One down. One down. Alaska is home to five species of Pacific salmon, Chinook or Kings, Sockeye or Reds, Coho or Silvers, Pinks or Humpies, and Chum or Dog Salmon. On the Kenai, Kings, Reds, Silvers, and Pinks run between May and August, each with their own peak time. If you can believe it, this is actually a slow day. There. 
The limit for sockeye here is three per day per person. It takes a little bit of time, but once we tap out, we head back to camp to process all that fish. There's the hall. Puppies, come on. Always catch. Yeah. Three, six, nine. Oh. Uh, look at this. Ah. Woo! -hoo. Oh, it's heavy. Um, you might be surprised by how these salmon look. You're probably more used to seeing images of salmon looking more like, well, this. Well, interestingly enough, these are also sockeye salmon just two months later. This transformation is all part of the salmon life cycle. So while these beauties might not look so salmon-like to your eye, it's actually when they look like this that you wanna catch them because that's when the meat looks like this. No dye here. That is the true color of wild sockeye salmon, caught right after it comes in off the ocean. That rich red is a result of a diet full of krill and phytoplankton, which is high in carotenoids. These salmon just spent the last two to three years of their life in the ocean, and we caught them a short 17 miles from the mouth of the Kenai. They are still filled with the vim and vigor of life, something they need to complete the final and most arduous phase of their lives. Which brings us to the life cycle of Pacific salmon. Spoiler alert, it's really interesting. Salmon begin their lives in their natal freshwater stream. Fertilized eggs incubate and then hatch salmon in their first stage of life called alevin. Alevins remain safe in the gravel stream bed until they develop into tiny baby salmon called fry. They will live this stage of their life in freshwater until they enter the smolt stage when their bodies adapt to live in salt water and they move out to sea. Adult salmon live in the open ocean anywhere from one to seven years, depending on the species. And then something remarkable happens. Something in their biology says it's time to go home and the salmon return. They find the exact same river where they first enter the sea, then follow the exact same pathway through the upstream tributary system until they finally reach the exact same stream where they hatched. They find their way home using scent and the Earth's magnetic field. Once home, they spawn. The female flips on her side and fans the stream bed to create a nest called a red. She lays her eggs, her mate fertilizes them, and then she covers the nest with gravel. They repeat this process over and over until her eggs are spent and she will guard her nest till the end. Possibly the most fascinating aspect of salmon spawning phase is their physical transformation. When salmon enter spawning phase, they arrive on a full tank of gas, so to speak. Their flesh is rich and red, full of fat and carotenoids. But once they enter the river, they won't eat again, and every ounce of energy is given to the tireless journey upstream and to spawning. Males develop a hooked jaw and teeth, thought to help them compete for a mate and fight off other males. Pinks and sockeyes develop a characteristic hump on their backs. And their color changes completely, from silver to shades of red, as carotenoids are transferred from the flesh to the skin to attract mates. All that fat is burned up in the journey and also passed to the eggs. By the very end, their flesh is weak, colorless, and flavorless. So completely do Pacific salmon give themselves to the next generation that they will never again return to sea. Not long after spawning, they waste away completely, resembling zombie fish in the end. Their bodies feed countless species of animals across the state and return vital nutrients to the rivers and to the land. 
So important are salmon to the food chain that they are considered a keystone species of Alaska's ecosystems. That is why this meat is so vibrant. These salmon were caught less than 20 miles from the sea, long before they lose their vitality to the spawning phase. Salmon can be processed in different ways. First is the cut. It can be cut in steaks or in fillets, as the guys are doing here. The bellies are especially fatty and are often smoked. They make a great snack like jerky. Some people save and eat the eggs, also called roe. Others don't. It's a matter of personal taste. Salmon caviar has many uses, and we most often see it on sushi. Everything not used by us humans goes back to the river and to the ecosystems that we use every last bit. The cuts are then washed thoroughly, and it's hard not to be in awe of the sheer amount of meat yielded by one trip on the river. Next comes packaging the meat so it can be stored and eaten throughout the long Alaskan winter. Many in Alaska smoke their salmon, which is absolutely delicious, but also a bit of an operation. Right now, our main focus is fishing while the fishing's good, so we're vacuum sealing and freezing all of it. If anyone wants to smoke theirs later on, they can always thaw it out and do so. It's hard to find an on-grid Alaskan household without a chest freezer or two. It's understandable when the rivers and land are so bountiful that you really can hunt, fish, and gather a large amount of your food for the entire year. I mean, look at it. By next morning, this batch will be frozen solid and anyone heading out will take their cut. Throughout the season, Dave and Jane's place will be a revolving door of friends and family. That revolving door of friends and family is the other beautiful thing about fish camp. It's about fishing, but it's also about people. It's a chance to get together, soak up summer, make some new friends, share great food, swap stories, and tell tall fish tales. I've heard a story, I've heard it said I've come to believe that love is a bet Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose And sometimes it calls you right in the room Come to my table, come to my bed, go Now that you've seen a day in the life of fish camp, it's time to get some sleep and do it all over again. It 
doesn't look it, but the Kenai is actually chock full of sockeye swimming upriver. In fact, about 29,000 reds will course through these waters today alone. So yeah, today is going to be a good day. <laughs> there is some some wisdom in there. There's some Wisconsin in it <laughs> By pure darn luck, I got an awesome spot today. So I am one happy country girl. We have been dreaming about sending our family salmon so they can stock their freezers. So it feels incredibly satisfying to have such a good fishing day. Dave, we going? Yeah, I got one. That's nice. And now it's time to go back and process all that fish. Don't crash the boat. Lucky for us, our adventurous co-captain is up to the task of getting us there. As we are processing this batch and I'm learning that it is not as easy as it looks, <laughs> let's talk rules. Millions and millions of salmon enter Alaska's rivers each year. The fishery is closely monitored and managed with regulations set to ensure the sustainability of each population. Rules and catch limits changed by the species, by the river, even down to a particular section of the river, and catch limits can change by the day depending on currently monitored fish counts. Regulations vary between sport and commercial fishing, and special rules apply for Alaska residents as subsistence is a very real and true way of life here. In fact, an entire method of salmon fishing is only permitted for Alaska residents. Dip netting. Dip nets come in many shapes and sizes, but the hoop can be no larger than five feet in diameter per regulations. Even those made of lightweight aluminum can be tricky to handle, especially in strong currents. The idea behind dip netting is, well, to feed your family, so limits are set by household. The head of household, or permit holder, is allowed 25 salmon plus 10 salmon per additional member of the household. So a family of five would be allowed 65 salmon, not per day, but for the entire season. When and where dip netting is allowed across the state is carefully regulated. Here on the Kenai River, it is allowed on certain sections of the mouth, right where the river flows into the Cook Inlet. The dip net season is highly anticipated, as you can see. Folks come well prepared to harvest what they need for their families and for the long winter. After another successful day of fishing, this crew settles in for a little more people time. Little do we know, we are all in for a very special performance. Good. Aaron, that boat.
up here. You just rocked up. That's the way that the world goes round. You're up one day, the next you're down. It's a half an inch of water and you think you're gonna drown. That's the way that the world goes round. I was sitting in the bathtub counting my toes when the radiator broke. The water all froze. I got stuck in the ice. The history and culture of salmon runs deep in Alaska. It sustains diverse ecosystems, drives a significant economic industry, and holds rooted cultural significance. In a time when we so greatly disconnect ourselves from the natural world around us, this way of life is a breath of fresh air, a return to that most basic relationship with the earth, to live from it, work with it, and be with it. The cyclical life and return of the salmon is not only fascinating to behold, it is also a connection to the past, a natural cycle that has taken place for millions of years, leading to lasting traditions within the communities that live from it. We are so grateful that we could witness and take part in this great and enduring part of Alaskan life. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like. Subscribe to our channel. Send us a comment below. And for exclusive content and a behind the scenes view of the art we dare yet journey, join us on Patreon. See you over on Patreon.